the Joe Rogan experience. I got my bell rung pretty good, I think about a month ago, actually on the mats. I was climbing on a guy's back. It was a good lesson for me, too. I was- uh, Did you slip over the top? No, I, I got both of my hands involved, and he rolled and snapped my head into the mat, and I didn't oh, have a chance. Oh, face planted. I, but I, and I didn't, again, I don't know shit, so I'm learning, mm. and it's a mistake that I haven't made since then, but yeah, I had my hooks in. And was kind of just getting too involved in that drastic movement, and it was a full whack in yeah. the same thing, and the headache for a few days afterwards. Dudes get wild when they they try to get out of things, and that that's a particularly dangerous move when someone's on your back and you decide to yeah. slam them into the ground. It's kind of a dickhead move, really. Well, I would have been okay if I had had at least one post, but mm -hmm. like I said, I was I wasn't thinking about that. That wasn't was even. Was he standing? Did he try no, to stand? No, he was turtled. Oh, I don't think I would crawl on somebody's back if they were standing. My, yeah. my game's not very advanced. You guys, your background, you would probably, your jujitsu is probably different than mine. But even taking someone's back standing is tricky as fuck because they can just throw themselves backwards and on concrete. Oh, that's a game over. It, it's a death sentence. I mean, that's you're, you're, what I actually in... thought about that afterwards because you will see people who, you know, I'm here because I want to learn to protect myself in the street. Mm -hmm. And if I had done that on the street, and had my head cracked on concrete, I'd yeah. have either been waking up in the hospital or not at all. You got to kick their legs out in those situations. If you have someone's back and you're standing, you got to, you got to, I mean, the, the options that exist that don't exist in jujitsu, one of them is you kick their fucking legs out. If you have someone's back, you know, you actually kick their leg. You don't just, just jump on them with the yeah. hooks in on concrete. It's just too dangerous. Before you get to that position, you, you want to yank them and do something, trip them, do something to, to get rid of their base. But someone who's strong, that's so dangerous because someone who's strong can carry you on their back and then just throw themselves backwards. I mean, even hardwood floor, anything. I mean, or even against a building or yeah, a car. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, anything, anything. You want to get them to the ground. You want to get them to the ground or a standing guillotine. Like when you're in a front position, some, that's another one that's really fucking dangerous, man. Um, guys, a guillotine? Yeah, guys have gone for uh, takedowns with guillotines. Like say a guy shoots in with a, with a, for a takedown and a guy grabs a guillotine and pulls back and then this guy's head is the oh, first thing that hits the ground oh, and they get paralyzed their yes okay a guy on team alpha male on uriah faber's team wind up getting paralyzed for life that way yeah in training on the mats yep Fuck. yeah in training shoots in for the takedown and the guy gets him in a guillotine and they all all their weight together falls on this guy's head and his neck compresses and his neck breaks and he loses his his ability to move for the rest of his life it's um that's a common one in fact that's ha not common but it's happened multiple times that I'm aware of and you know you got to imagine on the street you know someone tries to take you down on the street and and you elevate and go into a, a guillotine position and they fall down and slam their fucking head first you're going to crack it open probably too <sighs> yeah it's there's there's so many i mean one thing that is a good criticism about jiu jitsu is the lack of takedowns and um, that is a, a real factor in any sort of real world situation. The hope is if you're in a bar or something like that, there's a scramble, most things wind up on the ground. That's true until you deal with a skilled opponent. And if you deal with a skilled opponent who has takedown defense and then you're stuck in the situation where, oh, okay, now you're in a realm where you're a white belt. And this guy's a black belt. Like if someone is a, a problem, a wrestler <laughs> who can strike, yeah. it's a terrible position to be in. And we saw that with a lot of uh, in the early UFCs in particular, a lot of jujitsu black belts just didn't have takedowns, and then they would get involved with a wrestler who would easily stuff their takedown, and the wrestler was a better striker, and those guys got fucked up. You had to imagine that'd be a quick bout. It's not good. I mean, the only thing a lot of guys did was they would follow their back and try to pull guard and try to entice a guy into coming to their back. And then they would kick off their back. Like those, uh, like Hickson used those those tactics when he fought Funaki. Like he, up kicks? Yeah, and he actually wound up fucking up Funaki's knee uh, by kicking at his knee, uh, hyperextending his knee from his oh, back. rugged. Yeah, that's a common common technique. You know, a guy standing over you and you're on your back posting up and you hyperextend his knee. It's just, uh, look, judo is the best, in my opinion, for someone who's wearing clothes. You know, I think every jujitsu guy would really greatly benefit from having a, 
a, a good comprehensive knowledge of, of judo. How deep would you go? Judo is a good thing to learn, man, just period. First of all, those guys are so freaky, chimp strong. Some of the freakiest chimp strong guys I ever roll with were judo people. Because judo players, man, they're just all, everything is constantly this. They're constantly grabbing and <clears throat> everything is the hips torque and, and torque rotation. And yeah. There's so much explosive movement carrying a human body, right? So they're doing explosive movement like sandbag training with another 200 pound person all the time or, or larger, particularly like women. Like Ronda Rousey, you know how goddamn strong that woman is. She f- freakishly strong. Oh, I bet. Because she, her whole body was designed to, you know, th- throw bodies around, throw a human body. I mean, it's like you think of weightlifting, right? Like, when are you ever weightlifting your whole body? Well, maybe if you're squatting, or maybe if you're bench pressing, if you're exceptionally strong. Or deadlifting. Yeah, or deadlifting. Those are like the compound movements, but like curling or tricep extension. None of those things. Overhead press. Very rarely are you using your whole body weight that way. I don't think it's advisable to do that with no. your whole body weight. <laughs> and your whole body weight is way more difficult to control because it's moving and resisting. And yeah. it's, you know, try picking up a dead body, a person who's out cold. It's fucking hard. You got to scoot a person your way. Like if I had to pick up a dude who's 195 pounds and I had to pick him up and he's out cold, fuck, that's hard. You now gotta, put 80 pounds of gear on him. Yes. I'm, I would. I could only imagine. And guns dangling all over the place. So with a judo player, imagine that, but imagine that person also resisting. You know, like they're some of the freakiest, strongest people in the world. I uh, just sit down when I start with judo people. I'm like, ha fuck yeah. you. Good move. <laughs> Good move. I watch them over in the corner and I hear just the whoosh. I'm like, yeah. okay, oh, I'm going to yeah. sit down. It's a beautiful thing to learn, though. It's a beautiful thing to learn if you can get someone – That'll that'll really work with you and who's technique oriented, not someone who just wants you to spar all the time. Because one of the things that happens with judo a lot when people are just getting involved in it, there's a lot of scrambling on the feet that could put your legs in a compromised position where your knee blows out. How much, uh, just in your time watching the UFC, how many of the takedowns do you see are judo based? It's not that often, but some guys are really good at it. And the guys that are really good at it, it comes up. You know, there's 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 some guys. Back when Caro Parisian was fighting, Caro was a, a, a great judo player who was in the early earlier days of the successful UFC, was uh, one of the better judo guys and he would hit he would hit hip tosses and all kinds of different judo throws all the time. And Ronda, of course, you would do it all the time too, but with Ronda, that was basically the only way she would take you down was with like upper body grabs. She'd grab. She would, her move was like to grab with grab the head and then take people down with that and and use judo. But it does happen. But it only happen. You know, it happens with skilled players. Yeah. But it, when when it does happen, it's like it's a it's a big surprise. Oftentimes, like whoa. <laughs>